So I've got the transom all routed off now and cleaned up and uh, it's a good job I did really because you can see there's a few things going on in here that we just need to get sorted out before I put the outer layer back on and replace that. There's been a little bit of water ingress just down in the bottom there. You can also see there's a few checks in the wood which uh, I'm not too worried about actually. I'm going to put some thickened epoxy back into those before I bond the outer layer on and I think they'll be fine. My biggest concern really is these cracks between the joined boards. You can see the transom was made up of three boards, or is made up of three boards. Where this pine middle has dried out over time, it's just shrunk back a little bit and caused these seams to open up. So the transom is effectively in three pieces at the moment, just sandwiched with a piece of ply either side. So what I'm planning to do next and what I'm set up for now is to just route a small channel in there. Just gonna use a quarter inch route of it and um, a small little guide bush, just a little bit bigger than the uh, router. And then I've set this piece of wood up along here. So this is screwed to the transom and it's positioned so that to account for the guide bush and the cutter that's on the router, that's gonna cut me a channel right down the middle of that line basically. So what I'm gonna do is just mill out a quarter inch channel in that and then I shall just glue a, a splint of new wood back into that piece so I know that the two parts are well bonded back together. So what I'm gonna do then is just set up another, that second button there is gonna be on the top side of this one. So the guide bush will actually run between the two and that'll keep the router on course then. So it's not gonna go straying off anywhere and ended up with a, a wonky line. We should have a nice straight clean cut through there. So I'll get all that set up and uh, start cutting. So I've done one light pass with that setup and now what I want to do is set the depth of the router so it's going to cut all the way through this pine but not into the plywood that's sat behind it. I've measured that and that is 24mm. So now what I need to do is set the router to cut to 24mm depth. So what I'm going to do is just plunge it down until the bit is just touching the surface of the wood. and then lock it off. So that height is now the face of the piece of pine. Then what I can do is slide my stop down till it's touching the base there and then slide my little guide down to zero, make sure that's on zero. If I pull that up to 24, I can lock that off and now I know that when I plunge with the router, it's gonna to go to a depth of 24 mil. So I unlock the handle, plunge back down, and that will be an extra 24 mil of travel from the face of the timber. And I can come right back up and we're ready to go. I don't need to necessarily cut that in one pass and I probably won't because that's quite a, quite a large pass for this size cutter and especially with such a long bit. So I'll just gauge the depth by eye and do a few passes, but I know that when I hit that stop, I'm gonna be at 24 mil and the back side of a piece of pipe. So let's do a few more cuts. So there you can just see underneath the guide, I've got a nice clean channel cut ready to put a spline in there. Uh, I went a little bit over a quarter inch in the end because um, I was slightly off the line so I just dropped the height of the lower batten a little bit and then just milled the slot a bit wider. That won't be a problem because I'll just machine the spline to fit the gap. 
So it doesn't really matter what size it is, just as long as I've cleaned up the edge of both of those boards. So we'll take that uh, guide off and then I'll set it up on the lower edge to do um, the spline slot for the other two boards as well. So there we have the two spline channels cut through to the ply just on the other side. So the next thing will be to just measure exactly what that gap is, machine a piece of wood to the right size and epoxy that back in place. That will then join those three boards back together so we'll have a lot of strength back in the transom which will be good. As you can see there's been quite a few things bolted onto that transom over the years. A couple of different drain holes at the bottom, uh, some holes over there which were, were for the trim tabs and various different engines by the look of it. So the holes that are circled in pencil are the only ones we're going to keep. All the rest of them are going to be filled back in with some wood before the new outer transom goes on. So that's the new spray rail parts machined, running on from the originals, so we'll extend them back to the transom. The next thing to do then is to scarf these into the old spray rails, so I need to cut a scarf joint in the old spray rail section there, and then scarf the end of the new spray rail as well. So the two of them overlap and there's a nice join with plenty of um, glue surface area between the two. So I'm going to cut these at a 12 to 1 ratio scarf joint. So the way I'll work that out is to measure the height of the spray rail here, which is 17 mil, and then times that by 12, which will give me the distance along here that I have to come before I feather out to nothing, basically. So we'll be right down flush with the hull at this end, and then we'll come out to nothing at this end. So at a 12 to one ratio, that means I need to come along 204 millimeters from the end of the spray rail. So I'll measure that along to here. So that's going to be the angle of my scarf. 
spray rail will then finish up there and this will be scarfed at the same angle so the two meet and you've got a nice big surface area of glue where they overlap. So in order to cut that I'm going to use a router so I've just made up this little jig frame which is going to help me to do that. And that's just going to sit over the top of this and what I'll do is incline this jig to the same level of the scarf angle and I know it's going to be um, parallel to the hull surface because it's sat here so I'll just make up a couple of blocks under this end and set that to the right height and then we can just use a guide bush with a router bit and we'll cut away the material inside that. So I'll get all that set up now, ready to go. So to get this jig sat at the correct angle, um, I'm going to do the same calculation that I did for the spray rail part, but in reverse. So what I'm going to do is measure how much length I've got, which is 450mm, and I'm going to divide that by 12, and that will then give me the height that I need to lift this end in order to make a 12 to 1 taper from this end to this end, which is zero, so flush with the hull. So 450 divided by 12 gives me 37.5. So what I'm going to do is just make a little block for this end, which is 37 and a half mil thick. This end will sit down against the hull and that end will sit on the block. That should give us our 12 to 1 ratio. So that's the jig set up and ready to go. You can see the little blocks there. Um, I decided to taper those blocks in the end just to give them a better fit so there wasn't any play in the, uh, in the jig and it sits nicely against the boat. So the back edge of those are 37.5mm and, and then obviously they taper down from that at the, uh, the same rate that the jig does. So that's screwed to the boat and ready to go. Both of the um, screw points that I've put into the hull there will be doweled afterwards. So I'm planning to go down these spray rails and put dowels in them anyway to reinforce. So I'll just make sure that one of those is in the hole that I've made there and it doesn't go right through the boat, of course. So the router then I've just set up with a small guide bush and a half inch straight fluted cutter bit. Um, the guide bush is just a little bit bigger than the router bit and that will just mean that I don't catch the edges of the jig anywhere. It's just going to stop me from going off course. So we're ready to set up and cut the first pass. So I'm going to set my plunge depth again and I want that to be just flush with the bottom of the boat when I'm right at the end of the jig. Um, this end of the jig is going to be the deepest cut and so I want that to be um, just flush with the boat or probably a little bit above. So what I'm going to do is I've just pushed it down to the end of the jig. I'm going to push the router down until it just catches the surface of the boat. Lock that off and then I'm going to set my depth stop so I know I'm not going to plunge any deeper than that. Now what I'm actually going to do just for a little bit of safety is then go down another two mil. So what I'll do is I'll wind the router back up and then I'm going to wind my depth stop down so I've set that to 2mm there, my guide I'm just going to wind that down to zero again so what that will do is just lift my cutter back up 2mm from the surface so I know I'm definitely not going to hit into the surface of the bunk and then I'm just going to start doing a couple of light passes so we'll just skim over that to begin with and um, see where we're up to So that's a couple of initial cuts there. You can see it's um, starting to taper the rail down parallel to the hull, which is what we want. And you can just about see that pencil line there as well that I marked for the original 12 to 1 taper. And we're cutting parallel to that, which is good. So just need to keep slowly adjusting the depth of the route a bit until this end here feathers down to nothing. And then we should be up to about here with the forward end of the taper. We'll just keep going down in small increments with the depth on the router 
and that will gradually take the whole thing down to the bottom of the boat. So there's the scarf spray rail. You see we're nice and parallel to that line, which is good. So I'll do the same process as that on the other side. So the next job then is to taper the new spray rail to match what we've got on the boat. And for that, I'm just gonna clamp the same jig down to the bench and I'll feed the spray rail into the jig and cut it much the same way. One thing to bear in mind is that I need to cut this scarf um, in reference to this bottom face, which is against the hull, so it matches what we've got on the boat. If I was to put it flat like that on the jig, we'd have um, a taper that wouldn't match what we've got there. So in order to position that properly, what I'm gonna do is just put the two spray rails together and that's just gonna um, angle that properly so that the bottom face of that is parallel with the scarfing jig. So I'm going to clamp those in place and then I'll start cutting the first spray rail. So there we have the finished scarf. Once that's glued in place, I'll just run a block plane over this face and just take out any difference that's there and get the two blended in nicely. But um, that's pretty much done for that.
Okay, so that is pretty much the end of the hull repairs. So we've got the transom reinforced and the new outer transom put in place. All the holes filled in it. Um, there's just the holes that are gonna remain still on the inside of the transom, so they need to be drilled back out. Uh, only six of those are gonna stay from all the ones that were there. The spray rail extensions are on and all the spray rails have now been doweled, reinforced into the hull as well as the keel and the chines as well. We've got some extra screws in the transom in between the original ones. So that's pretty much it for hull repairs. The next thing is gonna to be to get the boat roughly fared off and then I'm gonna seal all the bare wood with seps before moving on to filling any little defects that need doing um, and then getting on to paint. So uh, that's gonna be in the next video. Hope you found this one useful. Thanks for watching. Cheers.